Hi, everyone, and welcome to Start Talk. I'm your host, Sarah Imri, and joining me today is Start.ca's CEO, Peter Rocca. Peter, welcome to the Start Talk set again. Thank you, and uh, welcome to the show. Well, I'm very excited to be here as well. This is a great show because we actually ask you the questions. There's very little I have to do. So we have some great questions here from some of our, our social media followers. So let's get right into it. Sounds so fun. Okay, so our first question is from Cody Benset. Mr. Rocca, what encouraged you to start an ISP and what challenges did you come ac- across in doing so? This is a great question. Uh, we could probably do like four shows just on, on this question. Um, uh, I've been in telecommunication you know, back in back before the internet existed. You know, there's these things called bulletin boards, and I think I got started. I got uh, really excited when I saw the Whiz Kids the movie, and don't check the date on that, please. <laughs> um, Actually, I think Whiskers was a TV show. Maybe it was War Games or something like that. But anyways, kind of that year, I got really interested in computers and how computers could talk to one another. And um, that was pretty interesting for me. And kind of the evolution as kind of things uh, grew and changed and um, just kind of evolved from we were running a bulletin board service and it became a two-line, a four-line uh, we were writing a lot of software, um, and then the, this internet thing was kind of starting to, um, you know, get some noise. And we started writing a lot of software that kind of integrated this bulletin board um, to the internet. And at some point in time, it was like, well, you know, we could just start providing internet service. But it was challenging. There's a lot of challenges. I mean, the biggest challenge was probably making people aware of what the internet was back in the day. I remember... Um, when we were trying to get into some web design, it was very new because obviously it was the web that drew um, people to the internet. Uh, prior to that, you know, you, there were things called Gopher and you know FTP that very few people probably remember. And so uh, I remember we would uh, try to explain to businesses why they needed a web page. And of course, there was no wireless connectivity, and nobody had internet at the office. Um, and laptops were um, a challenge. You had this little screen. It was about this big at the time. So we actually printed out sample websites, and we would go and knock on business doors and say, this is what you could have. And, of course, you know, I'm in the yellow pages. I, what do I need this for? So um, there's certainly been a lot of challenges as technology's changed. You know, we have uh, transitioned from, you know, a pre-Internet world to a dial-up to a high speed. Uh, we're in fiber, uh, data services, television. Uh, you know, so there's been a lot of lot of challenges along the way but um, that's what makes it interesting and fun. Well you've certainly been able to reinvent yourself multiple times to keep up with the times and so I think it's safe to say you definitely have a true blue expert in the internet sitting here answering your questions so thank you. Great segue actually Uh because the next reinvention of start.ca is what do you think? Uh, Is it TV? Shocking. (laughs) A few people, just a few, and by a few I mean almost all of the questions came about our exciting new product that we're going to be launching, uh, start.tv or start TV. And so technically speaking, what will be the requirements if they want start TV? What Mm -hmm. do they need to have first? Uh, So you have to have internet service with us um, for uh, for the for the main packages, and that's currently um, a regulation thing. It's not like we you know we're we're forcing you to take our internet, but due to the way that um, the CRTC and the the rights holders um, work, it has to be on a, on our own network. So you have to have an internet connectivity with us, and I would recommend you know kind of a minimum of twenty five megs is the speed. Um, the TV itself will you know use at peak. Um, six or eight, you know, megabits, maybe 10 in some cases. But you want to make sure that you've got enough uh, capacity so that if someone else is doing something in the house that your TV is not suffering as a result of of the uh, of a speed. So 25 megs, 30 megs, that's a good speed. That's a good speed. So that's that would be a good speed for that. It, if we have four or five, say, kids on iPads and I want to watch my TV show, we're set. We're good to go. Oh, well, you might want 50 if you got four or five <laughs> iPads. And kind of if you're going to have multiple sets in the home or multiple streaming, kind of a rule of thumb is if you if you kind of do 10 megs per device that you're going to be wanting to watch at the same time, uh, then you're, you'll be in good shape. Excellent. That's a great tip and something to uh, all of our listeners at home will want to know as we get ready to launch TV. So why don't we give them a little update on what they can expect sure. with Start TV? Um. 
well, we we know we know the hardware, so that well, I, I, what are the things I can share? So, um, the uh, we're, we're really close. Uh, nobody's nobody's more excited about launching Start TV than we are. Um, you know, we we obviously want to get out the door, but we want to make sure it's right. So, um, all of the, uh, the the equipment for the new platform that we've uh, purchased is coming um, in a couple of weeks, and uh, so that will all be in place by the end of July. The um, we've still got a little bit of work to do on uh, the long pole, basically, is the hardware, but we're going to be um, you know in, in pretty good shape. Not quite ready to share the date yet, uh, but I can show some of the, the equipment. Um, you know, this is really exciting. It's really pieces, it's so. really coming together when you yeah. have pieces to hold in your yes, hands. Yes, yes, yes. So we're really really close. Uh, obviously, this is the unbranded version, uh, but this is our new set top box. So. This set top box is uh, is pretty powerful. It's uh, despite it, you know, being really really small. Um, some of the things that we really like about it is that it can fit behind your TV, and because it uses Bluetooth to talk to your remote, uh, you don't have to worry about like for the tech geeks out there like IR. You know, you can't get the signal because it's stuck behind the TV sort of thing. So fits between uh, behind the TV very nicely, and uh, this remote, which is a beautiful remote, um, it's got a nice weight to it, uh, and uh, it's. Um, you know, we really, again, wanted to make sure that we're launching a really quality product. So really happy with the remote. Uh, we put a lot of thought into the, the design on it, um, but it uh, it's going to be a nice package. So the set-top box itself um, is a little bit, uh, although I don't like the word future-proof, it's a little bit future-proof. It is 4K ready, and although most of the channels uh, or none of the channels at launch will be 4K, um, it is ready and it also supports all the newest technology in terms of um, a protocol called HEVC, which provides better uh, compression and video quality. So, um, yep, it's really close. We're just waiting to receive lots of these. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's going to be soon. And the product itself, what they can expect from what we've been building. Mm -hmm. at, at layman's terms, you're talking sure. to a non-techie here, yeah, I'll be perfectly yeah. honest. Can I watch my HGTV shows? Can I watch my Nashville, my yeah, no, <laughs> This so it's, Is Us? It's a really robust uh, package. So our, our main package, so we're legislated to have what's called a skinny package, which is a really stripped down, uh, inexpensive version that's got like local TVs and networks, um, the US networks and a couple of um, legislation channels and stuff like that. But the our main package uh, is, is a really robust package. There's pretty much all the channels. Most people will be able to just take the base package. And then we want to keep it really simple. So we've got a handful of themes for people that, you know, want maybe a few more kids channels, a few more sports channels, a few more. Uh, but all the all the main channels are in that base package. Well, that's really exciting. I can, I'm sure I can speak for everyone who's watching this right now that they're really excited to see what we come up with. So thank you for that update. One last question is actually from Jason Goldring. Do you think the new GDPR regulations will affect internet service speeds based on content scanning and auditing that might take place? It's not necessarily in this country. I think this is a great question because I think that it's kind of been in the news and it doesn't specifically affect our country, yep. but it affects our product. Yeah, no. Um, great question. I, I'm not sure... Um, have a simple answer for it. I, is it going to affect internet speeds? I don't think so. Um, so I'm not well enough versed on some of the um, in country. So uh, it was mainly protected in the the EU, and so there's different legislation for connectivity in the EU versus what privacy legislation is that affects the rest of the world. So I don't I don't think I can speak you know educated enough in terms of what exactly the uh, if there's any censorship or filtering that's required, but just kind of thinking about it from a technical standpoint, generally, um, you know if it is for you know lawful inter intercept or something like that, usually it's by diverting a copy of the traffic and then looking through that. So I can't imagine it impacts speeds. But uh, certainly GDPR has, you know, caused a lot of companies to kind of reevaluate, you know, some of their processes. And uh, there's a little bit of ambiguity in, in the legislation that I think is going to work itself out over the next couple of years. But obviously, you know, it's, um, it's a step, you know, towards uh, a better privacy and, and, and better rights for people. So, you know, I think it's a, a positive uh, impact, but uh, there's going to be a little some bumps, you know, until everyone kind of smooths out some of the ambiguity in the uh, in the legislation. Fair enough. So I think we've answered some great questions. Thank you again to Peter Rock, our resident internet expert 
as we found out for sure this this episode. Thank you, Peter, and thank you to all of you for watching. This is, of course, Start Talk. I'm Sarah Emery. We'll be back with lots more information. So make sure to follow us on our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all social channels to make sure you have all your questions answered. And if you have a question we haven't answered, keep following us and make sure you get your question out there so Peter can answer it for you in our next episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks a lot.